This is me. This is me. Go ahead and laugh. I was cute. This is me. First year teaching Sweetwater Middle School outside Atlanta, Georgia, sixth grade. Every single neuron was fine all throughout my body, including my hair. Can you tell? Stand up. That was a choice in 2001. It really was. Every neuron was firing in my body because I was so excited to start teaching. It's my first year of teaching. And I've been waiting for this moment to have my own classroom since the eighth grade. Because it was in the eighth grade when the bullying got unbearable. It was in eighth grade that Mr. Romain, my social studies teacher, walked by, heard my bullies taunt and laugh at me and joined them. But today was different. I get my own classroom. I get to have a classroom where I can ensure every kid is safe, affirmed, and loved. I have a classroom where every kid is held to high expectation and is on the path to college. But here's the thing. Looking at Mr. Whedon, first year teaching, I was still that scared eighth grader. Really scared to fail. Really scared of being judged. So how is it that I've been waiting this long to be the best teacher that I knew I could be, but I was so scared to be me? This is me, Tara Warrington, fourth grade teacher. I was in my third year of teaching, and I was far from being a great teacher. But what I lacked in skills and strategies, I made up for with heart and passion. I loved teaching, and I loved my kids even more. I wanted every day they experienced with me to be absolutely incredible. I literally wanted them to run to my classroom, so curious about what we were going to do next. We would do things like visit the Holocaust Center and listen to a Holocaust survivor speak. We would participate in global awareness activities like the Invisible Children. We had college mentors and would visit them to see what it was like to be in the day in the life of a college student. But next door to me, in the other fourth grade classroom, there was a different type of teaching going on. My teammate was one of those teachers that taught from her seat. She gave her kids work packets and worksheets so that she could sit at her desk, sip her Mountain Dew, paint her fingernails, balance her checkbook, and sometimes work on her grad assignments. Everything was cool between me and my teammate for most of the year. And then one day, she knocked on my door and asked to speak with me. She was really upset with me. She asked me to stop being me. She started to get phone calls from her students' parents, and they wanted to know why their kids weren't doing the same experiences that my kids were doing. She asked me to stop. I wish I could tell you that I stood up to her that day. I wish I could tell you that I made a stand for kids, but I didn't. I cried. Then she left my room. I closed my door. I sat down, and I cried again. In that moment, I asked myself, who are you? Are you going to be a teacher that teaches from her seat? Or are you going to be a teacher that does what's best for kids? Tara and I are really honored to talk with you this morning and answer some of these questions. We're also really honored because we get to represent the founding team at Meeting Street Elementary at Burns. We, we may have practiced that yesterday. Um, you know. uh, thank you, team. Uh, so uh, like Mim said, this week is focused on being extraordinary. So uh, Dirk, Katie, they're going to talk about being extraordinary outside the classroom on Friday. Sarah and Rain are going to talk about what it means to be extraordinary in the classroom. But Tara and I today are going to talk about what it takes, this extraordinary work you have to do in your heart and in your head every single morning in order to be extraordinary for your kids. So, no secret, Tara and I love podcasts. Anyone like podcasts, like Super Nerdy Podcasts, like This American Life, S-Town, Oprah Super Soul Sunday. We love them. We text them to each other at all times. Uh, we really hope that t- this morning is that podcaster you need after you've had a really hard day and you need some inspiration. We hope it's that podcast you listen to on your way to work so you can really fix your heart and your head to be extraordinary for your kids, kids each and every day. How many of you love Oprah Winfrey? Yay! Oprah doesn't know it, but she's my spiritual advisor. I listen to Super Soul Conversations, her podcast, every day on my way to work to get my heart 
and my head ready. A few months ago, she had a super soul conversation with Reese Witherspoon, and they were reflecting on their movie, A Wrinkle in Time, and they were talking about the theme of being a warrior for the light. And Oprah shared that in her upcoming O Magazine, she was going to pose the following questions to her readers. What are you a warrior for? What are you willing to stand up and fight for? I had chills go through my body. I was like, Oprah! Uh, not that she can hear me, but Oprah, I'm a warrior for kids. I fight so that every kid in America has a quality education. That's what I'm a warrior for. And I couldn't wait, of course, to share the podcast with Chad because he loves the book A Wrinkle in Time, but I knew he would be so into this concept of being a warrior. So fast forward a couple months, Chad, Kelly, and I are working on our vision for culture and climate at Burns. And we thought about Oprah's question. We thought about warrior teachers. And we said, what do our, we want our teachers to be at Burns? We want them to be warrior teachers. Mm -hmm. And we came up with 10 qualities that we think warrior teachers have. And Chad and I are going to talk about two of those today. I get to talk about my favorite. It's called doing too much. <laughs> have you ever had a kid say to you, you're doing too much? Yes. Yes. Well, that's a good thing. Let me explain. When I was a principal in Pittsburgh, I had a student named Alan A. When I got to the school, Alan A would say to me, you're doing too much. And I didn't know what that meant. And so I'm like, Alan A, I'm going to ride the bus with you on your way home from work this week to figure out why you have all of these bus referrals. Man, you're doing too much, Miss Warrington. I was like, Alan A, you're going to have lunch with me this week because we really need to work on this writing essay. I know you can do so much better. God, doing too much. I was like, all right, what does this mean? So I, I finally realized that doing too much meant that I was making Alan A feel uncomfortable. I was making her feel uncomfortable because I was pushing her beyond her comfort zone. I was holding her accountable to be the very best student that she could be all the time. And so I came up with a clever response to Alan A's, you're doing too much. And when she said it to me, I said, you're right, Alan A, actually I'm doing the most. I'm doing the most because I love you. I care about you. And I will make you. And I will make you be your very best today, tomorrow, and every single day. Alan A went from rolling her eyes every time I came into her presence to putting my name across her forehead <laughs> at our end of year carnival. Why did she do that? Because Alan A realized that me doing too much and doing the most made her feel valued, made her feel safe, made her feel respected, and most importantly, it made Alan A feel loved. I haven't seen Alan A for four years, but Alan A and I text, we call each other on the phone, and we FaceTime at least twice a week. And Alan A would like you to know that I'm still doing too much <laughs> because I call her assistant principal and I do checks on her. And I also text her teachers during the day periodically to see how she's doing. So yes, I'm doing too much. So I started to think, all right, I had my fourth grade teammate tell me that my teaching was doing too much and my student telling me that I'm doing too much. And then I'm like, where does that come from? Like, why do I do too much? Why do I do too much? What is in me that drives me to do too much? And what it is, is love. I love hard. I love my students so hard every day. What does loving hard look like and doing too much at Meeting Street Schools? That looks like doing your wit and wisdom lesson plan, reading it over and over and over and over until you've eternalized it because you can't teach what you, did, you don't know and what you didn't internalize. Yep. It means showing up on the weekends at your students' birthday parties, sporting events. It means holding your kids accountable when it actually hurts. That's what's doing too much. And every kid deserves a teacher that does too much. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So I'm going to challenge you this year to do too much and to love hard on kids.
I'm a, aren't I a lucky guy? I get to work with her. I get to work with Tara. That's pretty lucky. All right, I'm going to stamp it. All right, really, people, I'm going to stamp it. Say, doing too much. Doing too much. Loving, hard. Loving hard. Doing too much. Doing too much. Loving, hard. Loving hard. All right, we're going to start with a quote. Let me use some soft proximity to make sure y'all aren't on your phones. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how strong the man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have been done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who comes short again and again because there is not effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. Anyone know who this is? Teddy Roosevelt. President Teddy Roosevelt. The only feedback I would have from President Teddy Roosevelt is can we include some gender um, updates to this statement? Can we include woman, please? Can we include something in the 21st century? It's the only feedback I have for him. But this is one of my favorite quotes of all time. And why I like this so much is because it gets to this idea of being in the arena. And so what I'm honored to talk to you about today is what it takes to be in the arena each and every day for your kids. And that's being vulnerable. Yeah, I know, it's weird, right? Vulnerability, that makes me uncomfortable. I'm starting to sweat. Vulnerability, that's scary, that's uncomfortable. I'm gonna argue that being vulnerable actually is the best thing to do to be in the arena for your kids each and every day. So we're gonna get really comfortable with being uncertain. We're gonna get really, really comfortable with not owing all the answers and asking for help. And we're going to be very comfortable taking big, bold chances, failing, getting up, and doing it again better. That's being vulnerable. So one of my heroes, uh, Dr. Brene Brown, wrote a book called Daring Greatly, and she uh, defines vulnerability as uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. So you know that feeling you get in your stomach, that, that the knots, the butterflies, maybe on the first day of school, maybe on a first date. Maybe having an idea at a team meeting and sharing out. Maybe being the first person to say, I love you. Maybe initiating a difficult conversation. That feeling, that nervousness, Dominique is laughing because she knows it's true. That's vulnerability. That's vulnerability. That's how it feels. So why do we feel that way? Why do we feel uncomfortable? Why do we have the butterflies? Why do we have the knots? We have those because we're afraid to fail. We're afraid of being judged. We're afraid of not appearing perfect. Because it is terrifying to take a risk. It is terrifying to address a challenge. It's terrifying to, to make yourself emotionally exposed and not have that reciprocated and embraced. It's terrifying. But let's be really clear. Perfection and being bulletproof might be seductive, but they are not conditions of the human experience. So. Vulnerability. I'm going to argue that those who are vulnerable are actually the most brave. They're actually the most courageous. I'm even going to say being vulnerable is really hot. It is. You're the most brave. You're the most courageous. People who are vulnerable show up each and every day in the ring, in the arena for their kids, and they say, this is me. This is me. Wounds, bruises, brilliance and all. This is me. And I have sweat and dust on my face, and I love it. God, that's hot. And I am really hot right now, by the way. I'm sweat, <laughs> dust on my face. God, I'm like so close to Beyonce right now. This is amazing. I have my costume changed. All right. So show on, keep going. Brene Brown says that courage starts with showing up and being seen. Isn't that just so powerful? Courage starts with showing up and being seen. If only my first year Chad knew that. To just show up and be seen. To just show up and be seen. So powerful. So, what does vulnerability actually look like in the work on a daily basis? So, number one, with your kids. True story. Kids can smell fake on you real quick. Can I get an amen? Real quick. So, here's a surprise. Be vulnerable. Admit when you make mistakes. Apologize to them. Laugh with them. Be a human being. Show up. They will love you quicker. Trust me, it works, okay? Be vulnerable with your kids. Number one. Number two. I want you to take a look at this. 
These are ACT results in Charleston County Schools from 2013 to 2017. The top line are white students in Charleston County and their average ACT composite score. Little above a 22. The green line is 22 college ready. The bottom line, African American students in Charleston County's ACT composite 2013 to 2017. Round of 14. Y'all, this is unbelievable. This makes my blood boil. There's a 7.7 difference between African American students taking the ACT and their white counterparts. How is this our reality in America? How is this our reality? So Burns Elementary School has been, um, has had a rating um, of at risk. The lowest, according to South Carolina Department of Education, they've been at risk. I want you to guess how many years Burns Elementary has been labeled as an at risk school? Burns? A decade. We're talking generational impact. That stops today. One, I will be vulnerable. I'm terrified. Y'all, I'm so scared about this. I mean, I, I mean, look at this. Go back, go back. That's, we have a lot of work to do. I'm so scared of failing. I'm so scared of being judged. I'm so scared of not living up to my colleagues' expectations for me. But here's the difference. I acknowledge that, but I'm running straight towards that as a result. I'm running wow. straight towards those results. I'm gonna acknowledge that I'm scared, that I'm terrified, but I'm gonna get up every single day and be brave, be bold, and make amazing decisions for our kids. Doesn't mean that I'm weak by saying I'm scared. I'm just acknowledging that's the reality. And I'm gonna wake up, be seen, be Chad, be bold and brave in everything I do. That is what I'm asking you to do. That little voice in the back of your head that says, I'm uncertain, I'm scared, I don't wanna fail, my colleague's gonna judge me, I need you to strangle that voice right now. I need you to strangle that voice because this work is urgent and it has to happen today. So I need you to check yourselves every morning, do what you need to do, meditate, listen to music, rinse it off, be seen by your kids and make bold and brave, see that's how much I'm sweating, my name tag falls off. <laughs> make bold and brave decisions for your kids every day. So if I walk through Brentwood, I walk through Spartanburg, Burns or the Academy downtown, I wanna see sweat dirt on your face because I'll know you're in the arena and if you're in the arena you're doing the most for kids you're loving kids you're being brave and bold yes. so now you know who Chad is now you know who I am who are you who are you gonna be every day for kids you're going to be the teachers that are doing too much? You're going to be the teachers that stand into the classroom bold and brave every day? Who are you? Amol, can we get that? We have a little trick and it may not be working. There you are. <laughs> so Tara asked, who are you? Here's the answer. This is us. <laughs> this is us. This is us as one team, one family. And it's not going to be enough for Taylor Ripley to be bold and be brave. Y'all are silly. Turn that off. I'm trying to be serious. <laughs> Rain Hacker, ladies and gentlemen. Just couldn't wait till tomorrow. Yeah, right? I'm going to use proximity. So, this is us. Check myself. This is us. And it's not just one of us who shows up in the arena. It's not just one of us who's going to do too much. It needs to be all of us. This is us. This is what we must do every single day. Now go out there, get some sweat on your face, be extraordinary. We love you. Have a great day. <laughs>